Kembe's brain bleed side effect explained. Anti-amyloid monoclonal antibodies, a groundbreaking new kind of Alzheimer's treatment. Lakembi or Lakanemab received full traditional FDA approval for use in the U.S. in July 2023. Adjuhelm or Adjucanemab gained FDA conditional approval in June 2021 but was taken off the market in February 2024. Both drugs are designed to target beta amyloid protein plaques that build up in the brain and may contribute to cognitive decline. Like most drugs, this class of Alzheimer's drugs comes with a risk of side effects, including one known as ARIA, amyloid-related imaging abnormalities. Most of the time, this side effect doesn't lead to any symptoms, meaning there are no outward signs of it at all. There are two types of ARIA, brain swelling or tiny brain bleeds. The risks are significantly higher for carriers of a genetic variant called APOE4. Sometimes called the Alzheimer's gene, this variant is associated with higher Alzheimer's risk. The prevailing thought at this moment is that amyloid deposits in the blood vessels called cerebral amyloid angiopathy and APOE4 carriers tend to have more cerebral amyloid angiopathy and that because you have more amyloid in your blood vessels, when you bind those blood vessels with these monoclonal antibodies, the, or at least the amyloid, you make them leaky, and that's what's causing the aria. According to Sabah, for people who do not carry APOE4, the risk of aria while on the drug Lakembi is about 5%. If you have a single copy of the gene, that risk rises to 15%. Two copies, 33%. In rare cases, aria can be serious. During Lakembi's drug trials, at least one of the three patients who died had signs of aria in their brains. Donanumab is a new addition to this drug class, still in trials. There have been three deaths of trial participants related to aria. Urologist Daniel Gibbs, the author of A Tattoo on My Brain, spent 25 years caring for Alzheimer's patients before he was diagnosed with the disease himself. He's a carrier of two copies of APOE4 and experienced aria during a clinical trial for the drug Adjuhelm. I get headaches not un uncommonly, so I didn't think really anything of it, but they became a little more frequent and perhaps a little more severe. I read about two books a week, and I found that I, my reading speed really slowed down, and I had to use my finger to, to kind of follow along words, and it got so bad that uh, I, I couldn't tell the difference between uh, the letters P, D, and B, the ARIA business didn't cross my radar at all. And then a night or two before Christmas, I had like the worst headache of my life. And the kind that we as neurologists would associate with a subarachnoid hemorrhage, you know, massive bleeding into the brain. And I took my blood pressure and it was sky high, something like 220 over 110 and stayed hot. Despite experiencing ARIA, Gibbs remains a strong proponent of participating in clinical trials. ARIA are usually benign. Most people don't know they have them. They're only caught on MRI scans where there'll be little areas of swelling or little tiny areas of, of iron deposition from bleeding. But if people have symptoms from them, they're usually mild. Uh, headache is the most common one, occasionally confusion. But for the most part, almost always, even with symptomatic aria, if you stop the drug, they'll go away in a few months, and actually the drug could be restarted again safely. Donanumab is currently in phase three clinical trials. The FDA is expected to decide whether or not to approve Donanumab in early 2024. Dr. David Weidman is a principal investigator for two Donanumab trials. The rate of the watery type, it stands for amyloid-related imaging abnormality, was uh, 6% with denanumab in terms of causing symptoms, headache, confusion, dizziness. But we've learned over the last 10 or 15 years how to very quickly monitor by holding the dose, letting the edema or water resolve. Weidman says in the beginning of phase two trials, there were no cases of large bleeds. There were a couple of persons with stroke-like symptoms in the phase two of denanumab which did reverse, there is close monitoring that sometimes needs to be done and a lot of education that if a person has a sudden garbled speech or can't speak or a numbness on one side, within our trials, of course, it would just demand immediate attention from the family. But it, theoretically, this can be uh, a side effect of these drugs. And, and you can imagine when it's given to thousands that obviously we're amplifying the, that chance. 
While severe aria cases are rare, before starting on anti-amyloid monoclonal antibody drugs, patients should consult with their doctors about key risk factors. These include age, history of strokes, use of antithrombotic or anticoagulant drugs, and APOE4. For more of the latest news, please visit beingpatient.com.